Hello and welcome to Dingo's Ate My Podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. And this week we're talking about the episode Lies My Parents Told Me. Mm. Kind of mm. super happy times. Anyway, this episode originally aired March 25th, 2003, attracting approximately 3.4 million viewers. Mm. Alrighty. So we start off. New York, 1977. Spike is fighting Nicky Wood, a slayer whom he will later kill, as seen in the uh, fifth season episode, Fool for Love. Um, in a park at night in the pouring rain while her son watches from his hiding place behind a bench. Spike has the opportunity to kill her, but the kid distracts him, and he lets her go with the promise that they'll meet again. Love the coat, he adds with a smile before he leaves. Mm. When he's gone, a clearly troubled Nicky finds her son and calms his fears by telling him the mission is what matters. The scene switches to an alley in present-day Sunnydale. Buffy, Principal Robin Wood, and Spike are all fighting a bunch of vampires. Buffy and Spike manage to kill their quarry, but a vampire has knocked Wood to the ground and is about to kill him. Spike saves Wood by killing the vampire from behind, then helps him up. Wood thanks him, but the camera zooms in on the stake he's holding, and we see blood dripping. Spike also tells him to remember to use the stake. It's your friend. Mm-hmm. He, he remembers to keep it in mind. Previously, the first evil had programmed Spike with a, a post-hypnotic suggestion in his mind that allows him to turn Spike violent using an old song, Early One Morning, as a trigger. This way, the first was able to command him to kill again. Buffy wants to find out how to turn it off so they can fully trust Spike against the first, but Giles opposes Buffy. In his opinion, Spike is dangerous and must be contained or disposed of. At the same time, the Scoobies go to the basement of Buffy's house, where Willow makes a spell uh, with a special stone thingy, a magical artifact that penetrates Spike's mind and makes him more conscious of how the trigger works. Mm -hmm. During this process, the information about Spike's human past is revealed, including how he turned his sick mother into a vampire, only to be rejected by her newly vampiric self. The song that his mother used to sing makes him uh, relive the whole episode, episode, Mm-hmm. and switch into his evil soulless self. He unwittingly hurts Dawn in the process and scares them all, except Buffy. Meanwhile, Willow receives a phone call from a girl named Fred and quickly leaves for Los Angeles. She apologizes to Buffy for her quick departure, but promises to be back as soon as she can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After the previous incident, Wood privately convinces Giles that Spike must go, must die. Mm-hmm. Giles learns that Wood is the son of Nikki, now dead, and that Spike killed her. The two plan for Giles to distract Buffy while Wood takes care of Spike. Giles takes Buffy on patrol and begins asking her indirect questions and making obscure references uh, to her role against the first. In the meantime, Wood takes Spike to his hideout with a promise to protect him. But upon arrival, Wood reveals to Spike that he knows Spike murdered his mother and he's going to kill the monster inside him. Spike says he has no remorse over uh, killing Wood's mother and that it was all part of the game. Wood then plays the song Early One Morning, which triggers Spike's violent monster self and the two fight. As the fight progresses, Spike continues to relive the moments that transpired between him and his mother due to the stone thing in his head. Hmm. Wood takes advantage of Spike's flashbacks and using weapons knocks Spike around until he cannot stand and then attempts to stake him. At this, uh, th- at this point, Spike regains control of his own mind, having faced his own anger and regret on turning his mother into a vampire and then being forced to kill her. Wood is now almost helpless against the much stronger Spike, who gives him a violent beating and demonstrates that the song has no has no more power over him. Spike tells Wood the difference between his mother and Spike's mother is that Spike's mother actually loved him. Mm. While Jaws and Buffy are talking in the cemetery, they become involved in a uh, a fight with another vampire. Buffy realizes that Giles is trying to distract her while Wood kills Spike. She kills the vampire, leaves Giles, and rushes to Wood's place. Buffy finds Spike at Wood's place, uh, with Wood hurt badly but alive. Spike tells her that he gave Wood a pass because he killed uh, his mother. But if Wood tries anything again, he'll kill him. Buffy goes inside and tells Wood that she needs she needs Spike alive and that uh, she has no time for his personal vendetta. She promises him that if he tries anything like this again, she'll let Spike kill him. As she walks away, she says that she has a mission to win this war. The mission is what matters. Echoing Robin's mother's words when he was a child. 
Once at home, Buffy tells Giles that his and Wood's plan failed uh, and shuts the door on him saying, I think you've taught me everything I need to know. Hmm. So what did you all think of this episode? Oh, super happy. Oh, it, um, I have bad news, Justin. It's going to get worse. Yay! Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. On the one hand, all the additional sort of information to kind of build up upon the story, seeing the story of Slayer kind of go along, seeing Spike's past with all the particular stuff. Ooh, dear goodness, that rock going side of his brain. Ew. All the ew. Yeah, that... That was a neat effect. I like that. It's... I mean... It's fine, I guess. It's kind of a... It's not... It doesn't look great. No, I mean... Made me think of the mummy, in a way. With those scarabs. Mm. I've, I don't think I've ever seen the mummy. Okay. Mm. But, like, it's, it's a cool effect. It just doesn't look very good. But that's, you know... 2000. And early 2000s TV budget. And, silver lining to everything, they successfully got all the programming out of Spike's brain. Hooray! Yay! Yeah, and we learned a bunch about Spike's past. Yeah, he's not a very good poet. He tried, but... Bleh. Well, I mean, no, that's... Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, so this would be the final appearance for Drusilla. She won't be back again in Buffy. Since Buffy's kind of finishing up things. Well, there's still a few episodes left. Again, they're finishing up things. Yes, but she would be in Angel. Yes. Uh, okay, yes. There is obviously a tie into a a, uh, a crossover episode with Angel. Oh. Where Willow says she gets a call from... Where Willow gets a call from Fred. Oh. Um. And then she's like, I have to go to L.A. No. <laughs> yeah, that's to set up her going to L.A., to uh, retrieve someone who will find out who that is next week. Oh, interesting. Uh, and also to re Soul Angel. Hmm. Because he currently does not have a soul. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, no. Ooh, something happened in Angel there? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, but I'm not going to get into it because it's a long story. Oh, All goodness. Right. Well... With character from Buffy going off and getting his own show and all the shenanigans that most likely happens so, with that. when Angel loses his soul, he'd be an Angelus, wouldn't he? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Right. <laughs> oh, additionally with this episode, old-timey vampires. Who? What? Spike's mother when she was a vampire. Oh, They yeah. didn't want to do the entire makeup thing, so they just gave her the big size teeth. Oh, yeah, and they're, you can tell she can't really talk properly in them because her lines are kind of fucked up. Yeah. And it's like, oh, she got the cheap teeth. <laughs> yes, so, um, yeah, Willow is off in L.A., and she will be coming back next episode and bringing mm -hmm. someone with her. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be the second time that Willow had to reinstall Angel. Hmm. Because, uh, well, some things happened. Shenanigans from a different show. Yes. Now, we will move on to international titles. And I'm only going to pick and choose a few here, because there's like a long list. Hmm. Far more than normal. So, uh, in Finnish, Web of Lies. Yeah. In German, Mothers and Sons. In Japanese, Mother's Lie. How many languages did this episode get made in? Well, it would have been translated... Like, most of these episodes would have been translated into, like, a ton of languages. Okay. Mm. There's just available more international titles than normal for this episode. <clears throat> I see. Uh, and finally, we'll go with the last one being uh, Polish, which translates as Memories of Childhood. Mm. No, I think as it is, English kind of wins out with having a snazzy way of sort of saying it, but giving you kind of the basic gist. Everything else is just kind of wham. So, for music, uh, Robert Duncan with the original score, and Nana Muscuri with Early One Morning. I probably butchered that. Ah, oh, yeah. Just a simple iTunes recording of that song. Yes, whatever, I don't know. 
Yeah. So, next week. <laughs> Some shit's gonna go down and I'm super happy. Uh, next week we'll be talking about the episode Dirty Girls. Okay. <laughs> Willow brings Faith back to Sunnydale just in time for the arrival of Caleb. Huh. He's a preacher who's aligned himself with the first. Ooh. Oh, yay. Ooh. Oh, and he's also super-powered. Oh, yay. Oh, no. And something's going to happen to Xander. Oh, uh, yay. Um. Mm. I actually spoiled this in, like, a review of, like, a... I don't want to say like a season two episode. Hmm. But that'll be fun. So until next time, I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And I'm Justin.